Hello, welcome to the video on solving two-step equations. This is our second example set, example set B. And of course, I hope you had a chance to watch the lesson and do the problems in the first example set. And uh, if everything is going well and you're understanding and you're able to get the right answers, then that's, that's excellent. But we want to continue to practice. So that's why we're going to go ahead and start to do these problems. And hopefully you already had a chance to uh, work on them. But let's take a look at our first one here. We have 1 3rd x plus 6 equals 10. So if you recall, the first thing we have to do is isolate the variable term first. And we're going to go ahead and subtract 6 from both sides of the equation to achieve that objective. So I'm going to add down here. I'm going to get 1 3rd x is going to be equal to, okay, the 6's go away here on the left-hand side. So 1 3rd x will be equal to 10 plus negative 6 or 4. All right, so now I have to be able to solve this basic one-step equation. And in order to do that, to solve this equation, 1 3rd x equals 4, I need to multiply both sides of the equation by 3, okay, or 3 over 1. And that's simply the reciprocal of 1 3rd. So when I do that, I get x is equal to 12. All right, so once again, okay, if you're able to solve these one-step equations, and you understand how to use inverse operations to isolate the variable term, then you'll, then you'll be fine. Because all these problems, these two-step problems, are basically taking the same stu, uh, two steps. Okay? All right, let's take a look at our next problem here. So I have 6 equals 14 minus 2x. Well, this time my, my uh, variable term is on the right-hand side of the equation. So a couple different ways you can approach this. You can either leave the variable term on the right-hand side, or you can rewrite the equation if you're more comfortable um, in the following way, 14 minus 2x equals 6. Okay, if you just like to have the variable on the left-hand side, it's fine. All I did was switch sides. But let's go ahead and um, let's leave it the way it was, all right, just to make things a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to isolate the 2x part first. That's actually going to be the negative 2x portion of it. So I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides of the equation to get that variable term all by itself. So when I do that, I'm going to get 6 plus negative 14. Okay, remember, you're always adding down. So 6 plus negative 14 is going to be negative 8. Okay, negative 8. So here the 14s went away. I'm left with negative 2x on the right-hand side. Okay, so I have negative 8 equals negative 2x. Now to solve for x, I have to get rid of this negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by negative 2, and I get 4, positive 4, is equal to x. Okay, so a little bit different here, just because the variable term was on the right-hand side of the equation, but it's still the same, still the same steps, okay? If it bothers you, that's fine. You can go ahead, or if it bothers you having the variable on the right-hand side, go ahead and rewrite it like I showed you in the beginning and still take the same steps. As long as you're getting the answer, that's what counts. All right, so let's go on to our next two problems. So a lot of fractions here, because I know you like fractions, and of course you're saying, yeah, sure, I love fractions. <laughs> I remember, uh, I all have to confess, I didn't particularly like uh, fractions. Um, like any young student, you know, I wanted to use my calculator, etc. But you know what? Um, knowing fractions is just going to, first of all, you have to know fractions. And second of all, the more you work with them, it's just going to make your life so much easier, especially in algebra. So try to, you know, try not to use a calculator uh, to help you out if you can avoid it. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and get into our problem here. I have negative 4 plus 4 fifths x equals negative 6. I'm going to isolate this part first by getting rid of this negative 4. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides of the equation. Okay, So this negative 4, don't let this operator here trick you. Okay, You're saying, oh, that's plus, so I'm going to have to use minus. No, an inverse operation is whatever is going to get rid of this number that's next to the variable term. So in this case, adding a positive 4 to both sides will do it. Okay, so when I add down now, I'm going to get I'm going to get four fifths x equals negative six plus four, which would be equal to negative two. Okay, and then once again we're going to go ahead and solve this basic one-step equation. 
I have a fraction in front of the variable, so all I'm going to do is multiply both sides of the equation by the inverse, which would be 5 fourths on both sides of the equation. I'm just taking my time here because it's um, it's very easy to make a mistake. That's why you need, it's not like a like an added thing, like a bonus, like saying, oh yeah, show your work, okay. I'll show my work. I can actually do this. No, showing your work is a requirement. It's a it's a check. It's kind of like an insurance policy for you to to get your answer right. If you don't show your work, you're really taking a lot of risk on getting the right answer. And if you're going to do the problem, you might as well try to do it and get the right answer. If if you're not going to try to show all your work, really, you you don't don't even attempt to do the answer because then you're just kind of guessing. Okay, you got to show your work. All right, so here we go. We got five fourths times four fifths. X is going to be equal to X. And now we have negative 2 times um, 5 fourths. And then that will be equal to negative 10 fourths. And then, of course, we like to reduce our fractions. That would be negative 5 halves is the solution. Let's go ahead and write that over here. x equals negative 5 halves. Just so we have room to do our next problem. Okay, let me get rid of this. All right, so our next problem is negative uh, 2 fifths t plus 1 equals negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and isolate the variable term by subtracting 1 from both sides of the equation. And I'm going to get negative 2 fifths t is equal to negative 3. Okay, negative 2 plus negative 1 is negative 3. So to get t by itself, I'm going to have to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 5 halves. Okay, I've got a negative 5 halves this time. Okay, and last time it was 5 fourths. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 5 halves. Now remember, I have a negative 2 fifths, so that's why i got to keep the sign. It's still going to be negative because a negative times a negative is a positive. So when I multiply this negative 5 halves times this negative 2 fifths t, I get a positive 1 t, and that's what I want. And then when I get negative 3, and I multiply that by this negative 5 halves, I got a negative times a negative is a positive. So this would be 15 over 2. Okay, I'll go ahead and leave it as an improper fraction. Okay, as long as it's fully reduced, that's fine. If you want to turn it into a mixed number or a decimal, uh, that's fine also. Okay, as long as it's fully simplified, that's all I really cared about. And of course, as long as it's correct. So that's it. Okay, so yeah, you're working with fractions. It might take you a little bit longer. You know, got positive and negative numbers going on, but you no, know, the the steps are still the same. Okay, we're first isolating that variable term, and then we're solving that basic one-step equation. Okay, let's move on to our next one here. So here's our variable term. So I'm going to have to go ahead and and isolate three eighths w. I got a negative one fourth equals sixteen. I got 3 eighths w minus 1 fourth equals 16. So I'm going to have to add 1 fourth, 1 fourth, excuse me, to both sides of the equation. So now I'm going to get 3 eighths w equals 1 16th plus 1 fourth. Okay, so let's go ahead and just do this over here real quick. 1 16th plus 1 fourth. Okay, so how do you do that? Okay. How do you add fractions? Hopefully all of you know how to do this. So 1 fourth is going to be the same thing as 4 sixteenths. Okay, because so if I reduce 4 sixteenths, I'm going to get 1 fourth. And I need common denominators, so this is going to be 5 sixteenths. Um, if you struggle with that, then that's an indicator that you have to go back and review fractions. Okay. All right, so 3 eighths W equals 5 sixteenths. Now to solve for W, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by 8 thirds. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. That'll be W equals 5 sixteenths times 8 thirds. And I'm going to go ahead and just cross cancel some factors here. And when you do this, you should get 5 over 6. 5 6. Okay, it should be your final answer. Let me just double check that. That'd be 40 over, let's see, da, 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 two. Yes, okay, I like what I said. Sorry about thinking out loud, <laughs> but I, I like to double check my work. Even I like to double check my work. Okay, no one's perfect, and I'm certainly capable of making a mistake. Um, all right, so if you're getting this, 
then you know that's great I know you don't like the the fractions and the extra steps most people don't but it's all part of math okay but just focus 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 and show all your work and you'll be you'll be fine okay so 7 plus m over 11 equals negative 3 so here is my variable term I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides of the equation and I get m over 11 equals negative 10 and so this is really 1 11th times m. Okay, so let me rewrite that. Okay, this is really like 1 11th times m. So to solve for m, I'm going to multiply both sides by 11 over 1 or 11. Okay, so m would be equal to negative 10 times 11. Okay, and you know, if you don't want to do some of these calculations in your head, you know, maybe get a calculator just to kind of help you out or double check. That's fine. But m would be equal to negative 110. All right, last two problems. Okay, so here is our variable term. I'm going to go ahead and subtract one third from both sides of the equation. And I got t over 6 is equal to 1 half. All right, so let's go right here. 1 half plus a negative 1 third or minus 1 third. So we have to kind of do that problem off like as a, as a separate little problem. Try not to do your, your addition of fractions or whatever else you're doing. Try to do that away. I'm going to go and erase this as soon as we get our answer. But 1 half minus 3 halves. Let's see, the lowest common denominator is 6. So this will be the same thing as 3, 6 minus 2, 6. Okay. And, um, you know, I'm kind of doing this, you know, taking a little bit of uh luxury that you know how to do fractions. I can't really teach fractions and two-step equations at the same time. It would just take too long. But when we do this, you should get 1 6 as uh, the, the sum. Okay, so 1 half plus a negative 1 third or 1 half minus 1 third will be equal to 1 6. Okay. All right. So let me go and erase this material here, or all this work. So I've got T over 6 equals 1 6. That's the same thing as 1 6 t. Okay, let me erase this just so we're clear. t over 6 is the same thing as 1 6 t. So to solve for t, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 6, and I got t is equal to 1 6 times 6, or t equals 1. Wow, can you believe all that work just to get the answer t equals 1? Oh, sometimes you feel kind of cheated right in algebra. You're like, boy, you, you know, you were expecting something a little bit more excited. But that's okay. You know, as long as we have the correct answer, that's what counts. You can always go back and, by the way, and check your solutions. If you have 1, 6, matter of fact, let's do that real, real fast. So if t equals 1, okay, if I plugged 1 in for t, I get 1, 6, right? Not t over 6, because t now is equal to 1. 1, 6 plus 1 third is supposed to be equal to 1 half. So does that check? Well, one third is the same thing as two six, right? Because I want common denominators here, right? If I reduce two six, I'd get one third. So if I add this side up, I get three six. Is three six the same thing as one half? It certainly is. So it worked out, it checked out. Okay, so let's finish up with our last problem here. So here is our variable term. So I have 3p minus a minus 4 equals 17. So our first situation is how do we deal with this? What's a minus a minus 4, a negative of a negative 4? Well, that's positive, okay? That's a positive 4. So really, our equation is 3p plus 4 equals 17. All right, so now I'll go ahead and isolate that variable term. Subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. I get 3p equals, uh, let's see here, um, 4 from 17 uh, will be equal to 13, right? Because 13 and 4 is 17. So yes, that makes sense. So to solve for p, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 3. p equals 13 over 3. Wow. Okay. So I know this was... Uh, no, a little bit more uh, work than maybe some of the previous example sets, but um, you know we're we're looking at challenging you. You want to get a little bit better each time, and of course we want to um, uh, 
test your knowledge with working with fractions and positive negative numbers, etc. This is the this is the real world. If I made all the problems very easy, and then it make you feel good, and you'd be like, well, yeah, that's great, but you're you're not going to be getting better. And the whole idea is for you to master this stuff. That's where we want you to go. All right. So once again, if you found a weak area, go back and review. If not, congratulations. Keep working hard. We'll see you soon.